Well, it's great to have Hanu and Mila Hapanen with us here on 100 Huntley Street. They have founded an organization called Caring Hands and it's right there in Kampala, Uganda. Welcome to 100 Huntley Street. Oh, Good to have you. you with us. Thank, thank you. you. It's a privilege being here. Oh mm -hmm. man, you've been there, what, 10 years now, I understand. 14. 14 yeah. years. First, tell us a little bit about your family. I know you have uh, a, a son. Do we you? have two sons and a daughter. Two sons mm -hmm. and a daughter. Mm -hmm. And they've grown up in Uganda. Yes. yes. They were five, three, and one when we left. Now they are 18, 16, and 14. Wow. And you, and you were in Finland? You no. Left? We left from here. Oh, from Canada. That's yes. right. But your background mm -hmm. is Finnish, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. But you're in Canada for several years. Yeah. I'm yeah. getting it right yeah. here. Yeah. And then you went when your children were quite young to Uganda. Yes. And wow. this, this time coming back, it was the first time when the two youngest saw snow. So it, it ha Christmas oh, was a blast. Man. And we had lots of snow this yes. past Christmas mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, and it was actually, um, it was a proof of the existence of God because b before we came here, we prayed that God make sure that it's really cold and lots of snow. And apparently it was the first white winter across Canada in 40 years. So Thanks God does lot. exist. You are the one that prayed for the cold. Yes. Yeah, and it, it's yeah. not what you know, it's who you know, you yeah, know, and, exactly. and, and you know, it, it's a good way to say that God does answer prayer. Okay. Well, take us back 14 years ago. What took you to Kampala, Uganda? Well, I was invited mm -hmm. to um, go to Kampala School of Theology, and uh, I was there developing the curriculum and, and teaching at the school, and then uh, I've been the principal of the school for, for many years there, and that's the first thing that actually, you know, uh, brought us to Uganda. Uh, I'm a name K myself, so M -K once means missionary K. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, w once you go to Africa, and if you like it, you can't get it out of your yeah. system. And it was in my system, and uh, I was always praying that God would open that opportunity for us to go. And and uh, even before we got married, actually, yes. is it that was it was one plans. of the things that we wanted to do mm -hmm. together was missions. And so, 14 years ago, you said to, to Hanu, let's go, you, you, there was no problem, you went? No problem. I, you know, I had visited uh, Africa once before, 1983, with, uh, we went to see Hanu's parents. Mm -hmm. and, but I had always had the calling to go, but now I'm going with the children. Yeah. And I, was, uh, I started to fear a bit, but then uh, I received a prayer from somebody who didn't know me. And, that person said that God, you know this lady's past, you know her presence and you know her future. Surround her with your angels. And that's when the fear dropped. And Africa is excellent place to bring up your kids. It's all of them love Africa. And uh, even our oldest son is now studying in York Uni University and he wants to do something so that he can return. Isn't that something? Mm. We've had the privilege of bringing our children with us to mm -hmm. Africa as well, and, and they just certainly love the people. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the people of Africa. The people of Africa are very friendly. It's, um, they, they go so far to, if they invite you to their home, they will serve the best what they can. And it can be more than one month's salary what they are mm. serving. Like, could you imagine to do that? It's, they are really friendly. Hanu, in uh, the questionnaires that we send out to all of right. our guests to get to know you before we have you on set, uh, you made a statement here. You said you went from theology to duology. And then you said a personal pilgrimage. What does that mean? So you went to be a principal of a school. Theology to duology. Yeah, what, what happened was that I was in northern Uganda actually one Sunday morning preaching in one of the churches there and the church was in the middle of a refugee camp or an IDP camp, internally displaced people's camp. And um, uh, that morning I really felt that God had put a message on my heart and I was just excited, you know, uh, to preach that message. But just before I got up to preach, all at once there was a lady who said to me, that, Pastor, can I talk with you? And she told me her, her story that um, uh, I've been here in this camp for two years. My husband was killed by, by the rebels, and I'm here with my two kids. Uh, we've used all the assets we have. We don't have any food. We haven't eaten for a couple of days. And just as I was coming to church this morning, there's a soldier who approached me and, and uh, offered money for sex. And she said to me, I said, what do I do? 
says, I, I feel it's wrong. I know it's wrong. But if I don't, my children are going to die of hunger. Pastor, can you give me some advice? And, and I remember thinking, you know, of course we rescued that woman out of that situation and gave her money and, and uh, everything that, you know, we could to help her. But just the thought, you know, came to me later on is that, you know, Jesus spoke about being the bread of life. And then in another situation, in another context, he says, you give them something to eat. And I, and I remember thinking that, that you know, I was ill-equipped for that situation, is that I came to speak about the bread of life, and in actual fact, I should have had some bread to give them to eat. So what happened is that, and I had a number of other cases that happened, a number of other incidences that happened, and um, I started realizing that, okay, I've been teaching all this stuff for all of these years, developing the programs and, and the curriculum and the, and the courses and all of that, but I need to do something in a very practical level of, of, on this uh, issue also. And uh, what happened is that the theology that I was teaching before, I was finding a way to apply it into a real situation from theology to duology. And uh, once we, uh, we started doing this type of thing, you know, my eldest son, um, being the person he is, he said that, Dad, I'm, I'm glad to see that at last you're doing something useful with your life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. And so you then went as well um, after a woman came to you. And let me quote. She shared the thought, quote, the body of Christ is HIV positive. Ah, oh, what a statement. And what did you... What did you do with that? Well, it, it's a scandalous statement, and, and it, it caused, as a theologian, mm -hmm. it caused some, some soul-searching and some thinking, is that, you know, is that theologically correct to say that? And um, in Africa, the truth is, is that HIV has devastated Africa to, to an extent that there is no comparison to any other place in the world. And um, what has happened there is that, that HIV is in the church and it's outside of the church. And, and as long as there are members of the body of Christ that are living with HIV, uh, the body of Christ in that sense is HIV positive. And uh, in that sense is that, that uh, we need as a church to do something about the body of Christ mm -hmm. and, and to care for and, and to address these type of issues that are relevant to the church today. Mm 